All right, everybody, welcome to the shop. Um, I'm here today with my good buddy, Trey Rides Bikes. Yay. He's not used to talking with his hands. Trey, we got your wheel here off of your dirt jumper. Tell me what's going on with it. Trying to get this one going again. Um, just kind of been stuck with the mountain bike the last few weeks. And I've had a few friends try to rebuild this hub already. I've brought it to the places of all places. Richard's bike shop, hopefully he can square me away today. Yeah, what's going on with the hub? So pretty much the hub is loose and uh, it's, you know, even when we rebuild it, we get it, to, you know, tighten up again, but the cone and cup uh, design here, we just can't get it to tighten up enough to, um, to technically be fixed, I guess. You All right. Say. So we've got cup and cone style bearings here, not cartridge bearings. Uh, we've talked about cartridge bearings in the past. Uh, these are going to be angular contact style bearings, which is what uh, we talked about that went into the headset uh, on a couple of other videos. Uh, but yeah, let's crack this thing open and see what's going on with it. All right, we're going to start by just taking all the bolts off of this thing. Uh, this bolt here, coupled with this washer, uh, are what go outside the frame uh, and hold it onto the bike. And we have this bolt here. Now it looks like that one is stuck in there pretty good. So let's flip the wheel around. Start taking this side off of here. Well, it looks like this, uh, this nut's on there pretty tight too. So. Um, Looks like we're going to need the wrenches. All right, I went ahead and took the uh, disc rotor off just so we don't get any grease all over it. And we'll make sure we clean that off before we put it back on. Go ahead and use a couple of wrenches. Hold on to that one on the other side. And then whichever one pops loose is the one we'll unscrew. We don't really need to unscrew both of them. So as you take parts off of this, it's important to remember what order they all came off on. Uh, so you see we've got our lock nut here. Um, this one locks against the uh, cones, uh, and you see the uh, uh, ridged part is facing out. And we've got a washer for that lock nut. Looks like there's a second washer here. That's interesting. And we'll set all these to the side. Let me take this last cone out. All right, now let's get at those bearings. So now we're gonna just pull this out slowly and we're gonna see if we can use a magnet to capture all of these ball bearings. All right. Now we flip over to the other side, we do the same thing. Just gonna clean this out. So we need to clean as much of this grease out as we can get to. Uh, it looks like this grease is still pretty fresh, but we want to make sure that we still get all of it out because there could be little metal shavings or contaminants in there. Uh, we don't want that marring up any of our uh, parts. Also, on this side here, we have a little seal. All we need to do is just gently pull that out with a pick or a screwdriver or something. So it looks like we have two different size ball bearings on this wheel. Uh, we've got nine of this smaller size bearing. We've got nine of this larger size bearing. Uh, the larger side size came out of the braking side and the smaller ones came out of the drive side. Uh, it's probably two different sizes because uh, you need a little bit more space uh, for the freewheel on the drive side so they put little smaller bearings in there. Uh, we just want to make sure that as we're putting everything together we keep the drive side parts separate from the non-drive side parts uh, so we can put them all together in the right place. Okay, so we've got everything taken apart and cleaned. It's all in the order that goes back on the bike. Um, typically when you do this, there's not really much need to take off both sides. Uh, you can just leave one side on um, so that you don't have to worry about trying to get the spacing right. But we're just going to start from scratch here just for fun. First thing we're going to do is make sure that all the parts are still in good working order. Uh, here on the axle, sometimes these can get a little bit bent. So what we're going to do is just roll across the table just like you do a pull stick and uh, tell us whether or not it's bent. Um, as far as these goes, uh, all the, the, the bolts and, and washers, they're all pretty fine. Uh, we do really want to check this, um, uh, uh, this race here. This is the, they call it the cone, they also call it a race. And uh, we want to watch for any kind of pitting. So this middle part of the surface here we want to feel for any kind of rough spots. Uh, if you have any rough spots on here, 
then they're definitely going to translate into a bunch of uh, noise and grinding and uh, bad times for uh, uh, for the wheel itself. Uh, so you'll feel that later. Uh, but we just want to check this, uh, and this one feels pretty good. Uh, we're going to check this one too. Uh, this one you can see right here has got some pretty nasty pitting on it. Um, we can try and put this thing back together, but I've got a feeling that this particular cone is going to need to be replaced. Uh, additionally, you'll notice that this cone has uh, a dust seal on it, uh, and this one, the dust seal has been completely obliterated. Uh, we're just going to throw this away, and um, we're just going to hope that uh, this is just closed off enough that we're not going to get any dust ingress. Um, this just isn't going to work anymore. All right, now that we've checked the races uh, on the cones, we're going to check the bearing races here the exact same way. Now, there's a little bit of rust here, but um, seems to be okay. Got like a little spot right there that might cause a problem. Uh, with these inner races on the hub, uh, if these start getting pitted out, then unfortunately it's time to get a new hub. Uh, this isn't something that's really replaceable. Uh, so let's hope these are in good shape. All right, now we check this one. Yeah, this one feels good too. All right, now that we've kind of explored what's going on with this, uh, let's go ahead and put it, start putting it back together. Um, this cone here, we're going to go ahead and reassemble it and see how bad it feels. Uh, we may have to replace it later, but we're going to go ahead and uh, quick and dirty put this thing back together. All right, one thing we want to uh, take note of this axle is that the threads on this side are shorter than the threads on this side. Um, this side here is going to be our drive side. I know it's the drive side because um, it's a little bit more recessed into the frame where the bearings sit. Um, and this will be our non-drive side. Uh, what I like to do on these is I like to go ahead and put the drive side on first, or at least once we get it all assembled, I like to tighten the drive side first. Um, that way, that way you don't have to worry so much about um, being able to get your wrenches in around the cassette. Uh, whereas on the non-drive side, it's a little bit easier to access everything with your wrenches. There we go. So let's put this race on here. All right, so we've got the first side kind of assembled. And um, we, sometimes you can tell uh, where the bearing races were, where the cones were. Um, sometimes you can't. Uh, if you don't know, just guess. Um, we'll get that all worked out later with the spacing and the centering. Um, and then these last two that go on um, to hold the wheel onto the frame, we're going to set those aside. We're not too worried about those just yet. Now that we've got this first side kind of just pre-assembled, uh, we're going to go ahead and do a dry fit. Um, this is the drive side, where, so we're going to use the small bearings. And uh, we're going to just drop the bearings in, and we're going to put this rod right through there just to help prevent those bearings from falling through the frame or through the uh, hub to the other side. We'll just kind of drop them in there. And we're just going to let those sit in place. So it's been a little bit of time uh, since we last spoke. I know you can't tell because of YouTube magic, but it's been a couple of days and we've got a couple of new parts and I've got a couple of new insights as to what may have happened. Um, if you look at this cone right here, um, this was on the non-drive side. It was the one with the larger um, quarter inch ball bearings. Um, this one has a, a nice little dust cover seal here and that's uh, metal and it's kind of uh, uh, interference fit onto that cone. Um, that's what this is. Uh, we already talked a little bit about how this was uh, fit onto this drive side cone. Uh, no longer fits on there. Um, it's a little rough now, but I think what may have happened was uh, the previous person who looked at this bike took this cone off and this ring was stuck inside the hub. And then when it was reassembled, it was reassembled. Let me show you a little example. 
So it was reassembled with the ball bearings between this race here and then this seal as a race. And that was probably contributing to the feeling of it uh, coming loose because it wasn't actually coming loose. It just, this was bending a little bit farther out of whack. So in the break, we actually have gotten this race here or this uh, cone here and it fits the thread pitch of this axle. Uh, it is a little bigger in diameter uh, than the other one and it doesn't have this handy dust cover on it. But we're going to go ahead and try it anyways and see what we can get to work. So as you can see I've got half of this or should I say I've got one side of this assembled already and this is the non-drive side, the big bearing side. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just um, I've got this kind of estimated what I think might be the appropriate amount of space um, at the end of this, um, but really it doesn't matter how accurate I am because I'm going to make some adjustments after I get this in there, uh, but we're going to do a dry fit. So I've got one half of this assembled, the other half of it blank, and we're going to drop some bearings in here and use this. Now the bearings on this side, uh, when I took them out, the quarter inch bearings, they looked a little bit uh, a little bit marred up, a little bit pitted up, so what we're going to do is use a couple of new bearings in here. And I'm going to drop all of these in with the axle in there. And the axle is going to help prevent them from falling through. Okay, so now we have all of them dry fit in there, snug as a bug in a rug. We'll move on to the other side now. All right, I've got the non-drive side in and I've got it supported by some blocks underneath. And we're just gonna drop all of these bearings in. Now, when uh, this came to me, it only had uh, nine bearings on the drive side, but this side should have, I believe, 11 bearings. So I've got a couple extras in here and let's see how they fit. So I'm gonna thread our new cone on. All right, next step we put the lock nut on and the washers. All right, now that we've got this thing kind of dry fit assembled, see I got both sides? What we need to do is we need to measure how much of this uh, threaded axle is still exposed. So we got this much on this side, and then we take it over to the other side and you can see there's a lot more on this side. So what we do is we loosen this side and then tighten this side to match. All right, still a little bit out. Now that we've measured the approximate center of this, we've got it fairly well centered, we need to uh, remove this uh, non-drive side. And the reason we're moving the non-drive side is because we want to keep the drive side in place because it's really difficult to access those uh, cones. Um, and we need to remove this side so that we can lock this side into place. Hold this drive side in and just unscrew the other. All right, now that we have this cone and the lock nut kind of measured at the appropriate point that we want to put it. Uh, what we need to do is we need to take uh, this cone, which is basically a nut, and this, uh, what we call the lock nut here, and tighten them against each other very, very tightly so that they lock each other in place. That's why this is called the lock nut. So um, I have this uh, um, vise set up so that it keeps this thing from moving, the axle. Uh, and then I've got this set up so it keeps the cone from moving. And all I have to do is tighten this. I have the wrong wrench. All I have to do is hold the cone and then tighten the lock nut onto that cone. <sighs> nice and tight. And now that we know these two aren't moving anywhere, uh, we can do the actual assembly on the rest of it. Before we pack these in here, we need to put plenty of grease. Uh, I like to use the Park Tool Green Grease. 
Um, the Park Tool High Performance Grease is also a really, really good fit for this. And then we go ahead and grease the other side as well. Now this is one of those times that you really don't want to be shy with that grease. Uh, this grease is what's going to be actually lubricating the system. Uh, we want to make sure we pack plenty of it in there. Let's put our axle in there to keep these things from falling to the other side. And we'll just drop them all in. Just like before when we did our dry fit, we're going to drop the other ball bearings in. And again, having the axle through there is just going to help keep these things from dropping out the other side. Once we get them all in there, we can kind of work them around and nest them where they need to be. All right, and now we put the spacers and the lock nut on. Actually, before we do that, this side came with a little seal. We're just going to push that into place. All right, now here is the really, really hard part. Um, if those cones are just a little bit too tight, then this thing's not going to move or it's not going to move very well. And if those cones are just a little bit too loose, um, then you're going to have a lot of wibble wobble in here. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to figure out um, how to get those cones exactly right and then uh, tighten this lock nut onto that, uh, that cone. Um, unfortunately, and I'll show you an example here, uh, if you pay really close attention to this, and actually let me see if I can put a Sharpie mark on there. If I try to grab the cone here and turn this lock ring. So I'm holding the cone still and I'm turning the lock ring, but watch the axle. So the axle's turning with it. And what that means is that my lock ring is not what's turning, it's actually the cone. The cone is loosening into the lock ring. Uh, so what you need to do is you need to find some sort of way to hold on to that axle so that it doesn't have the ability to spin and then you adjust the cone with the axle held in place and then you hold the cone and tighten the lock ring. Uh, so we're going to move back over to the vise. So right now I've got that axle clamped nice and tight into my vise and you can see if I can so this, uh, these bearings are a little bit too loose because you can see I can move that hub. So we're going to tighten these bearings up a little bit. Now I can't move the hub, right? There's no movement, but spinning does not feel very good. So I'm going to loosen this just the tiniest bit. Oh, it's moving again. And the goal here is to gradually tighten that cone and check for the check for the bearings to have some play in them and then check to make sure that they still spin freely. And I think we've got that in a good place now. So with one wrench, I'm going to hold this cone. And with the other wrench, I'm going to tighten the lock nut. And so my axle is not moving because it's held in the vise. And my cone is not moving because it's held by this cone wrench, which means the only thing that's moving is this lock nut. So that very, very delicate setting that we've set should stay put. All right, so now we've got this thing turning well. There's no play. Uh, all we have to do now is clean it up a little bit and get it put back on the bike. Uh, just for good measure, because I've got this nice truing stand, I'm gonna go ahead and true this wheel and uh, also true the rotor 
um, and then we'll get it put back on the bike. It'll be good as new. All right, everybody, we've got the whole thing put back together. We've got the wheel trued up, we've got the rotor trued up, and we've got that bearing turning really nicely. All that's left is to put it back on the bike, and uh, I wanna thank you guys for joining me today. I uh, hope you learned something. If you liked the video, please uh, like it. If you wanna see more videos like this, please subscribe, and if there's anything in particular you'd like for me to make a video about, uh, please put it in the comments. Uh, thanks for watching.